if you're watching this video, you're probably trying to create your own XT30 cable. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to create your own by using a XT30 connector and some cables. Let's get to it. If you're new to my channel, I have a website at kevinwoodrobotics.com where I have a bunch of resources on robotics and computer vision. So check it out and subscribe to learn more. So I purchased these XT30 connectors. They have both male and female, and they come with these heat shrink tubes. So the reason I've been getting these is because I've been playing with these bare actuators. Uh, you can go ahead and check it out. I have a video on that as well. But the main reason I'm doing this is for these robotic type applications. You might have your own applications, but these connectors here work pretty well. Um, so some things to notice about these is that there's a minus sign here and a plus sign here. So you want to make sure you get the right side. The plus side is going to be a flat side. This is going to be for your red cable. And the minus side has like three edges that you can see here. So that's going to be for your black cable. So I also ended up purchasing the solder here. If you already have one, that's fine. This one is a Ross and Core one. So it has the flux inside of the solder. So it'll save you a bit of time and setup. Also, I specifically got these 18 gauge cables. Um, the reason for this specific one is because there's a very important detail that uh, this product mentions. And that is this part, which is the, the 2.3 millimeter over diameter. So the reason I care about this diameter is because for the connectors, they provide these heat shrink. And if the cable is, if the diameter is too big on the outside, it's not going to fit inside of the heat shrink. So the problem with a lot of these cables out there is that there's a lot of different types of insulation and that can cause the outer diameter to vary. So even if you purchase the 18 gauge cable, you could end up getting one that's like much thicker than you might have some issues inserting that into the heat shrink. So you either have to buy your own heat shrink to accommodate for that or um, just get the one with the smaller, smaller outer diameter like I did. So I'll go ahead and leave the links to all of these products if you want to go ahead and check them out. So the first thing you want to do is remove the insulation from your cable by stripping the insulation off. Once you do that, you'll be ready to prepare the solder. Go ahead and twist your cables. Once you do that, slide the heat shrink over. Don't forget to do this step because otherwise once you start soldering, it'll be pretty hard. So I'm going to first apply some solder on the tip of my cable. This will make the connection easier later because there's already solder on there. So now I'm putting some solder onto the XT30 connector. Once I do that, I'm going to take my cable with solder on it already and get my soldering iron. I could have a little bit of soldering iron on there, but then just pretty much push it down slowly and then it'll fall into the groove of the connector. So just shake it a little to make sure that it's solidly connected. And then once you do that, you could slide the heat shrink up and then use the tip of your iron, soldering iron to shrink the heat shrink if you don't have a heat shrink fan. All right, so now you should have your XT30 cable ready to go. And if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.